since 2009, I've been warning people that trouble is coming. That is what I personally believe the Lord has called me to do. We all have a destiny, a calling put upon us, a reason for being on the planet. Mine is to warn people that trouble is coming so we can be prepared and not be taken off guard. That's why, friends, I talk a lot about the necessity for us to open the door of our heart to Jesus so he can commune with us. And it's also why I talk a lot about the need to get into and live in the secret place of the Most High. And that's the only place we can run to when all hell is breaking loose. And that's whether in our own personal lives or in the wider world with all of its turmoils. Now, if we don't know Christ experientially, then we won't know where to turn when everything goes belly up. And we'll turn to other things that simply cannot help us. Now, while the saints run into the rock of our salvation, Psalm 95.1 the godless run to the rocks of their salvation. I was really amazed, friends, when the Holy Spirit revealed this to me. In Revelation chapter 6, we are told that the godless will run to bunkers carved out in the rocks. But when they realise that God's judgment is coming upon them, they call on the very rocks that were there to be their protection to fall on them and kill them. But of course, friends, there is no escape from the living God, whether dead or alive. Now it is interesting that the leaders and the wealthy elite will be in the number of those who run into these rocky hideouts. Let me just read from Revelation 6, 12 to 17 here so you can get a picture of it. I watched as the Lamb broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun became as dark as black cloth, and the moon became as red as blood. Then the stars of the sky fell to the earth like green figs falling from a tree shaken by a strong wind. The sky was rolled up like a scroll, and all of the mountains and islands were moved from their places. Then everyone, the kings of the earth, that's the leaders, the rulers of the earth, the generals, that's the military, the wealthy, that's the global elite, the powerful, again, the global elite, and every slave and free person all hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they cried to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to survive? Basically, friends, they ran into that hiding place in the vain hope that they could run away from all the doom that was coming upon them. When they realised that the wrath of God was coming, they knew that they could not even escape from the Lord. And so they call for those rocks, their hideout, their bunker, to collapse upon them. Friends, today, the wealthy elite are building those bunkers in the Rocky Mountains. Now, here's just a few headlines for you. Doomsday inside the luxury bunker owned by millionaires that can survive a nuclear attack. The article says, World War Three may look more likely than ever, and with that comes a new doomsday. But these millionaires are prepared and always have a bunker designed to withstand almost anything. OK, how about this headline? The nuclear bunkers designed for luxury living. Or how about this one? Creepy billionaire disaster bunkers cropping up in New Zealand. Do you have one? And again, finally, what about this one? Why is the US military moving back into Stargate base deep under the Rocky Mountains a decade after it was abandoned? The bunker is built under 2,000 feet of the Rocky Mountains and is able to withstand a hit by a 30 megaton nuclear blast. Now, I don't know about you, friend, but I want to have my confidence in the Lord. I don't want to be shaken and behave like the godless, as though I don't have the Lord to turn to in times of trouble. And besides that, friends, I don't have the cash to build one of these bunkers to live in. Now, the Bible, friends, is becoming more and more relevant with each passing day. And this is why we as Christians should learn all about getting into God's bunker, getting into the rock of our salvation. Friends, who needs an earthly bunker when we have a heavenly one? Last week, I spoke about how Paul had learned the secret of living through hell and high water. He had basically learned how to live in the secret place, the rock 
of his salvation, his God bunker. Stephen, the first Christian martyr, saw his heavenly refuge, his bunker, so to speak, open up before him and welcome him in as his physical life on earth was being snuffed out. Friends, I pray that we will all learn this, how to daily get into our God bunker.